This week we're going to dive into something that I've wanted to get into for a while. And we're finally going to get into it. We're going to talk about mastering the tone curve because... Oh, it's Tutorial Tuesday! <laughs> Guys, I went too hard on the intro, but nonetheless, welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week was actually the closest week I came to missing a week. You know, there's just been a lot going on, and it's actually late Tuesday afternoon, so, woo, this... This one came down to the wire, but today we're actually going to get into something that I've wanted to do for, for quite a while. We're going to talk about mastering the tone curve. Now, we're going to be working in Lightroom, but this actually applies to Photoshop, it applies to Capture One. You know, the tone curve is a powerful editing tool that uh, that exists in, in pretty much every photo editing piece of software. Now, there are some very slight differences between them, but the overall concept is the same. And generally speaking, you're going to get the same kind of performance uh, from whichever program that you use when it comes to the tone curve. So let's just dive into Lightroom. I've got this photo here, which uh, I've done nothing to. I've done nothing to it to edit it other than to just straighten the horizon because I just messed up just a touch uh, in camera. But that was because I was so keen to get the shot of the surfer heading out you know, on a cold winter's evening. But we are going to do all of our editing with the tone curve. So over here on the right, you've got this, this line that just cuts through the square in a 45 degree angle. It's actually going from the uh, the kind of black point, so the deepest black, which is over here at the bottom left, up to the brightest white, so the white point up at the top right. By default, they're the two points that are set on the tone curve, and then you can go ahead and, and affect those or add new points to, to change different values and things like that. You can see just below that it says channel RGB. That means we're working in the in the overall RGB channel. So we're affecting the total kind of exposure of the uh, of the photo. So if I was to click to add a point and then drag this down, it would darken the photo. Or of course, drag it up, it's going to brighten the photo. And I can double click on the point to get rid of it or you can right click and uh, select a flatten curve. Now, of course, we can go into the individual color channels as well. So there's the red color channel, green, blue, if we wanted to, to affect those individually. And we are gonna get to that in a little bit, but for now, let's stick with the RGB channel. So what can we do with the tone curve? Well, you can see behind the kind of line here, there's almost what looks to be pretty much a histogram showing us kind of where our, our different values are. So you can see a lot of this image exists kind of around in the in the shadows, in the in the just below the sort of mid-tones here. And we're, we're generally talking about the darker areas down, down the bottom left, the lighter areas of the photo up in the top right, which means the mid-tones are kind of occupying this space around the middle. Now, what we can do is actually add points to the curve to then boost or reduce certain parts of it. So we could actually increase the uh, the shadows to brighten them up a little bit, or we could reduce the highlights to actually bring back some, some definition and things. With this photo, I might want to bring the shadows down a little bit so I can select a point around here. And I probably want to select a point elsewhere on the curve, because if I just select one point just by left clicking and then drag that down to bring the shadows down, you can see it's actually bringing the whole curve uh, down with it. So I'm gonna double click that just to get rid of it, oops. And I'm gonna click there to add a point. I'm gonna click another point just in the middle here. And that means that as I drag this shadow point down, it's going to be affecting the shadows, but you can see the rest of the curve still moves a little bit with it. Because I've got this, this point here right in the middle, as I drag this, this curve down here, you can see on the other side, it's actually going up. It's actually boosting the highlights, which is going to add quite a bit of contrast. Now I can even go so far as to do that and then maybe add a point up here on the curve and actually boost it a little bit myself just to really get some contrast in there. Now that creates what's called an S curve, which is great for adding a bit of contrast just like this. And if I turn, turn the whole tone curve on and off, which you can do just up here, you can select this little kind of switch here. If I turn it off, that's what it looked like before we started with this. And then this is what we've actually made it look like just using the tone curve. Now, one thing that's super important about the tone curve, you want to be subtle 
with how much you're moving it. You don't want to go in too hard because as you probably saw just a moment ago, if I was to pull this shadow part down quite far, it starts to really affect the image. And similarly, you know, with this uh, with this highlight part, it, it really just starts to, to ruin the image there. You want to be relatively subtle with how you're affecting it. Now, there's a couple of other things you can do just on this RGB curve. Of course, you could you could bring the midtones down as well if you want to. But right down here in the bottom left where we've got the actual black point, so this is, this is showing where that black point is, we could actually bring that up. So if we actually left click on that and drag it up, you can see it starts to fade all the black in the image because we're actually raising that black point. Now again, you don't want to go too crazy with this because it starts to get starts to get really out of hand as you can see. But if you raise it a little bit, it almost gives it a little bit of a faded film effect. And similarly with the white point up here, you could bring that down to create a kind of muted effect on the on the white. Now again, in this in this photo, most of the photo is actually uh, in the shadowy parts, you know, lower mid-tones to kind of shadows. So there's not a lot of highlights and, and, and whites actually going on here. I'm actually going to bring the, the white point and the black point back to where they would be anyway. So I'm just going to press Control Z to undo everything I've done there. And I'm quite happy with the amount of contrast we've added to this image just with this kind of basic S curve here. You know, it doesn't always have to be something crazy. It can be something just like this. So let's talk about in actual individual color channels within the tone curve. So just underneath the uh, the actual curve itself, where it says channel and it says RGB, let's select the red channel. Now, you'll see it's it actually looks basically exactly the same as the RGB curve. It starts off as a straight line. And again, you've got this kind of histogram behind there, but showing you where the red is in the image. So it's mostly kind of down here in the shadows. And if we go through the different colors, greens, very similar sort of thing, and blues, very similar sort of thing, if maybe a little bit lighter. But let's go back down to reds. Now, let's say we wanted, let's say we wanted more blue in the shadow. That would be something that I would often do when I'm actually uh, editing these photos. So let's come down to blue. One way we could, of course, do that, we could add a point here at the shadow part for the blue and just raise that up. Maybe add another point kind of mid-tone wise and, and bring that back down. And you can see that's added quite a lot of blue to the image. If I turn that off, the whole thing off and turn it back on, it's added quite a lot of blue, but it's it's not a very subtle way of doing it, things. And, and, and it, it doesn't always work particularly well. You know, this image, it does work not too bad, actually, because there's quite a lot of blue here anyway. But let's look at a different way that we can achieve the same effect. We can actually get a nice kind of color grade going on with the tone curve. So let's come up here to the red channel. Let's actually add a couple of points here. Let's add one in the middle, let's add one down here in the shadows, and then one up here in the highlights. Now, let's actually drag the shadows down a little bit with the reds. And you can see as I do that, you start to see a lot more of the blue and the green coming through in the shadows. So let's drag that down a little bit. And let's, let's come down to the green channel where we can add maybe three points as well. And with the shadow point, let's bring that down as well. Now you can see that by doing that, by reducing the red and the green in the shadows, we've really emphasized the blue. We've really brought that out. It's, uh, it's, it's very much there in the shadows. But perhaps we want to contrast that a little bit with, with some red in the highlights. So let's go back to the red channel. Let's maybe boost it a little bit in the highlights and then come down to blue where we can add the three points. And let's reduce the blue in the highlights a little bit. I'm actually going to bring the blues down a, a touch as well in the shadows, just so it's not it's not so overwhelming. And then we could always come back up to the RGB curve, where we could maybe bring the midtones up a little bit, just to add a bit of brightness. Bring the highlights up, and then we could even maybe bring the shadows up just to just to brighten this up a tiny bit. Now, if I was to turn the whole thing on and off, if I turn the tone curve off and then back on, you can see how much of a difference we've made by using the RGB curve and by using the individual colors. We might want to actually bring more red out of that, uh, out of the shadows there. We might want to maybe even bring a little bit more green out. 
you know, it depends how it depends how blue we want it, how how kind of blue and purple. The, the the more you play around with them, the more you'll find there's a good mix. You know, when you've got blue and a little bit of red in there, it's going to make it a more, bit more purple. You know, when you've got a bit of green and a bit of blue, or a bit of green and a bit of red, for example, you're going to get a little bit more of a yellow look rather than more of a red look if you bring the greens out as well in the highlights, for example. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of color balance this. But let's again turn it off and turn it back on. We've made a huge difference just using the tone curve. Now there's a lot you can do with this. Of course it works well in, in, in all kinds of different photos. I use it a lot for portraits actually as well, just to get uh, just to get a certain look. And especially if you're going for a, a slightly more heavy color grade, it can work wonders for creating a really good looking color grade. You know, I used it a lot for my Halloween photos that we did out in the forest. I used the tone curve heavily to get that kind of look. So it's quite important for that kind of stuff, but it's, it's a great tool to use, you know, outside of all the great tools that are there in Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop, I think the tone curve is just so, so powerful, but you just have to be careful with how heavy handed you are with that curve. Now, if you have any questions about the tone curve, if you have any questions about anything, if you have any thoughts or tips yourselves, because I love hearing those, pop it all down in the comments. I love reading through that stuff. So absolutely, absolutely get it down there if you have any thoughts or tips or anything else, because we've really just scratched the surface. If you like the video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to subscribe as well if you're new, because there's new stuff all the time. Tutorials every Tuesday. Sometimes they're editing tutorials. Sometimes they're general photography tutorials. If there's anything you would like to see in particular, pop it down in the comments as well, because I'd love to hear your suggestions for future Tutorial Tuesdays. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And, ooh, as always, thanks for watching.